Over the years, I've seen the programming world become larger and larger and larger, and so I have a lot of sympathy for those people who are trying to self-learn programming. I look at them and I can understand how frustrating and overwhelming it can be to learn how to program because I was also in that spot too when I was learning how to program and as I'm still learning how to program, I can see how frustrating it can be when you have no clue what's going on. Over the past 10 plus years of working in software, I started to notice a couple of recurring ideas and principles when it comes to learning a new language and learning how to code. So in this video, I'll be sharing one principle in particular that I think would really help alleviate some frustration and overwhelm, and then I'll be applying it to the idea of learning how to code. And so I'll be teaching you what you should really focus on when it comes to self-learning and what you should not focus on when it comes to self-learning. So my name is Henrik, and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so what is this principle that I think would really help you out? It's called Pareto's Principle. So the Pareto Principle is also known as the 80-20 rule and basically it just states that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. And one of the things that sparked the development of this principle is that Pareto noticed that 80% of Italy's land was owned by 20% of the population. So here's another example. It says that the Pareto principle may apply to fundraising. So 20% of the donors contribute towards 80% of the total. So you start to see this trend of 80-20 where 80% 80 of the results come from 20% of the cause of the result. So how would we apply this to learning how to code? Then we can say that 80% of your proficiency in programming is contributed by 20% of the concepts that you would learn in programming. So the reason I bring up this principle is because I see a lot of programmers who are just learning how to code and they focus on, I find that they're focusing on the 80% that would only really help them grow 20%. And instead, I would rather them focus on the 20% so that they can grow the 80%. So the general idea that I would like to give to new programmers is that don't really focus on the small, the small details, the things that aren't really that important when it comes to your code and focus more on the higher level concepts when it comes to learning how to code. And so I'll go through some examples. All right, so the first thing that you should stop focusing on is code syntax. And I remember when I was a beginner, when I was learning C for the first time, I wanted to memorize all of my syntax for C and want to make sure I have the right amount of semicolons, the right amount of colons and the curly braces. And I wanted to memorize all of that. And I, and I still remember, I still know that all because I still code in C today. But um, I think what I realized when I was learning other languages is that when you're learning those other languages, you can just easily look up the syntax. If you forget something, it's easy to just look it up on the internet. So what is code syntax exactly? It's just the way that your computer language organizes all the different symbols of your program. So here it would just be like the, these braces, um, these these colons, and then how to write, how to indent your, your code and everything. And it's all the, just the way that your computer language understands the statements or expressions for that language. Okay, another thing that I would recommend not to focus too much on is taking a lot of courses. There's a lot of programming courses and this is Free Code Camp. They have a lot of nice programming courses here and there's, all, there's just so many things you can learn here. And I think a lot of times that's why people get overwhelmed because there's so many things you can learn. Okay, so don't get me wrong. I do think online courses are really good, but the problem is, is that sometimes I think I see beginners, they focus too much on the tutorials themselves and then they don't really work on their own programming projects. The danger of going through a lot of different tutorials is that 
it's not going to really stick in your brain and that's the first problem but the second problem is that you may learn things that you may never use in the future so you you really want to work on your own personal projects and then that way you can really figure out what kind of programming languages and tools do you do really need and then you can learn them as you go so say you had like 30 minutes to learn how to program i wouldn't spend that 30 minutes to watch one of these courses i'd rather see you spend maybe like 10 minutes watching a video and then apply that what you learned in that video to your programming project and spend the rest of the 20 minutes on your actual project so another thing not to focus on is i often see people who are just learning how to program and they're not learning any of these major programming languages they're focusing on a lot of obscure programming languages that no one really uses and i think it's a kind of like a waste of time because they're not they probably won't be using those languages in the future and if they were to go into their career and a lot of a lot of times these languages they build off of each other like if you learn one of these languages then it will really help you as you learn the other languages and if you learn the more obscure languages the way that they're programming and the, the ideas behind those programming languages it may not translate over into the more popular programming languages so i would focus more on learning more of the main programming languages that that most people are using and you'll get more support that way all right now the things that you should focus on all right, so earlier I said you should focus less on code syntax. So instead you should focus more on programming paradigms and programming paradigms are just a high level way of understanding your programming language and your code. After you've built some small programming projects and you get the general idea of the code syntax and how that programming language works, then I would say go ahead and start learning about different programming paradigms that are supported by that programming language. I think programming paradigms really start to come out more when you look at larger code bases. So I would say try to find some larger code bases online and try to understand how that program how different programming paradigms are worked out in that code base. As you understand these programming paradigms more, I think it would really help you as you start to build out your own projects in the future. You can start to employ one of these programming paradigms in your project. All right, another thing that I would focus on is software frameworks. And frameworks are really nice because they provide some general functionality and you can customize it for your own project. And so these come in the form of like code libraries or APIs, and they give you a lot of functionality in your project and you don't have to code everything from scratch. You can just use a framework and then you can employ that in your, your project. A lot of times you can have a programming idea and then it becomes overwhelming of how you can code that from scratch. So you don't have to worry about coding it from scratch. You can just use a framework and then just use those the generic functionality there. So here's an example of different frameworks for Python. And I think this is why Python is very powerful because you can use all these different frameworks. For example, for web development, you can use Django or Flask. And then for machine learning, you can use PyTorch or TensorFlow. And so you can use all of these frameworks to help power your Python programs. So instead of being overwhelmed about your programming idea, you can just look at all of the different tools and the frameworks that you can use. You can just put them all together, kind of like Lego pieces, and then build your program that way. All right, another thing I think you should focus on is your plan. So when you're building your own programming projects, the first thing that you should do before you start coding is figure out the plan. You want to figure out how your program stores data, how it retrieves data. You want to figure out the different logical sections of your program. And Learn Programming has a nice um, article that goes about how, some of the steps that you can use for creating your project. So here, step one, defining the project. And then step two is creating the workflow. Step three is breaking the project down into smaller components. So you really want to have a plan on how you're going to go about building this project. If you, once you have that plan, it gives you a higher level understanding of what, what is really necessary for your project. So I think having a programming plan is really important as you're building your programming project because it gives you a high level understanding of your program as a whole. And so you can plan out in the future what, what exactly you need to do. It gives you the tasks that you need to do because you're going to break out the program into different sub subtasks. And then that will really help you be more effective when it comes to building your project. All right, another thing that's really worthwhile to focus on when learning how to code is learning how to debug. Of course, there's going to be a lot of bugs in your code, especially when you're starting out. And as you build more complex projects with more complexity, there's more likelihood to get more bugs. And as you add new features to your programs, then you're going to get more bugs coming out. So you want to really want to learn how to debug your code. 
so i do have some videos about debugging i have this one and then also this one so if you really want to see how i would go about debugging some common beginner issues then you can watch those videos all right the last thing that i'll mention for this video in terms of what to focus on and what not to focus on has to do with mindset and mentality I think it's easy to go online and see all of these different success stories, people who learn how to code in like three months or four months and then they got a job right away. I think it's easy to look at those people and see all these all the success that other people are having. And I think that that's not very healthy to focus on. You shouldn't focus so much on those. And instead, I think you should focus more on your own discipline and being consistent when it comes to learning how to program. Looking at other people's success stories can be an inspirational, encouraging, and also give you some ideas on how you can replicate their success. But oftentimes it can be discouraging, especially if they started coding later than you and they often have earlier success, then that can be discouraging. And I think you shouldn't focus so much on them and comparing yourself to them because they have their own journey and you have your own journey. So focus more on what you can control, focus more on getting better and better each day, honing your programming skills, and just, just focus on being consistent. Like don't just code on Saturdays or the weekends. Try to focus on being consistent and code every day. And I think that's how you would really get better at programming instead of comparing yourself to others. All right, that's it for this week's video. Let me know in the comment section how you are gonna apply Pareto's principle to your programming journey. What are the things that you should stop working on or stop focusing on? And what are the things that you should start focusing on? Let me know in the comment section. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and then go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out in terms of applying Pareto's principle to your self-learning journey. And if it really helped you out, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.